Hi everyone, my name is Jade Calvin. I own and operate Calvin Associates Immigration Services. Today we're going to talk about impaired driving and how it affects temporary residents and permanent residents in Canada. So a lot of questions that I'm getting now are um, what happens if I'm in, convicted of impaired driving in Canada and I'm a temporary resident in Canada? So with the introduction of Bill C-46, this has made it so that uh, impaired driving is now considered a serious crime um, under the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. So what does this mean exactly? Because the criminal code now meet, makes it so that there is a minimum imprisonment sentence of 10 years or more, this means that it's considered serious criminality under the Immigration Act. This essentially renders a temporary resident, so if you're here on a study permit, visitor visa, or work permit, it essentially renders you inadmissible to Canada. Again, Canada is not great with enforcement, so while you're here on your temporary resident, you're subject to a removal order, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be removed right away. But what it does mean is that um, if you're here renewing your temporary status, which most people do every year, or every two years, um, once you try to renew that temporary status, they will obviously see that you have a serious criminality issue when it comes to your inadmissibility, and your work permit likely won't be re uh, renewed because you'll be inadmissible to Canada. I had a question the other day about a client who had an application in for a TRP. So that's a temporary resident permit, which is used to overcome inadmissibility to Canada. This client had an application in, and then the client actually had a second charge in Canada for impaired driving. And they asked me, what should I do if I already have an application in for a TRP and I have an impaired drive, a new impaired driving charge? My advice to this client was to withdraw that initial TRP application because the new charge would actually affect this existing application and the officer would see that there was a new charge that they hadn't declared in the application. There are some instances where we can update the application, but likely for an existing TRP application, we would withdraw that application and then submit a new TRP application so that we could have the officer see the new charge as well. Another question I get with the impl implementation of the new bill is how does the, the new uh, changes to the law affect permanent residents? So this is a good question. So under the Immigration Act, permanent residents are actually also inadmissible to Canada if they have a serious criminality offense. As you can see, this is very worrisome for permanent residents. Again, there are some policy changes that they're making so that uh, not everyone is affected by this law, but as of, of April 2019, permanent residents were to also be considered removable under the Act, which means it, once you renew your permanent residency card, you would have to declare that offence, and then you could again be subject to a removal from Canada, which means that you would have to go to the Immigration Division to an admissibility hearing, and then argue whether you are admissible to Canada or not. Obviously, you should have representation at that hearing. Again, if your ties are strong to Canada, you can obviously convince the um, Immigration and Refugee Board member that you deserve to be in Canada. But if you had prior convictions as well, it might be a bit of a challenge. So it does affect permanent residents as well. The last question that I'll cover, and obviously the most frequent question that I get with the implementation of the new bill, is how do I become admissible again? In order to become admissible, most people will now have to uh, submit what's called a temporary resident permit um, or apply for criminal rehabilitation. In the past, you were deemed rehabilitated with impaired driving charges after a certain number of years. Now, because of the change of status of impaired driving to serious criminality, you are no longer eligible to become deemed rehabilitated, which means that uh, you just automatically are no longer inadmissible to Canada and you can just apply as anyone would to come to Canada. So now you actually have to apply for a temporary resident permit 
if you can't, if you aren't eligible to apply for criminal rehabilitation, or if five years have passed since the end of your sentence. So remember that not since the uh, committed the act, but since the end of your sentence, then you can actually apply for. Uh, criminal rehabilitation five years after the end of the sentence. So as I touched on earlier, there are some public policy changes because the government realized that there are some negative effects of uh, this of impaired driving uh, becoming a serious offense. So it's our understanding that any um, impaired driving charges that occurred before the law came into effect in December 2018, they'll still be considered under the old law, so they'll just be um, regular criminality and not serious criminality, and so those people will not be inadmissible to Canada. So if the person already entered into Canada uh, being deemed rehabilitated because they had a prior um, conviction, then that shouldn't be an issue. Again, it's a little bit complicated and we recommend that you speak with a professional, especially if you've had a new conviction um, and you plan on entering Canada. You can contact our office to discuss your options. Uh, you can visit our website at calverimmigrationservices.com. Thanks very much.